everybody. Welcome back, boys and girls. It's your main math man, Mr. Shank, coming to you live from Summit Academy. In this video, we're starting that new unit on unit number five now. We're going to be talking about functions and how they look on the coordinate plane. Then, we, then in the second half, we'll talk about formulas on some 3D figures. So it says this. It says for the first part, we're trying to divide by zero. What happens? So it says study the statements carefully. So it has 12 divided by 3 equals 4 because 12 equals 4 times 3. And then it says the second part, it says 6 divided by 0 equals x because 6 equals x times 0. What value can be used in place of x to create true statements and explain your reasoning? So what we're going to say is that we know anytime we divide by 0, it's going to be undefined, undefined. And so what happens is this. We're going to say, and say there is no number that can be multiplied by zero to get something other than zero. And we know that because when you multiply any number by zero, it equals zero. So we're going to say, therefore, therefore, x times zero Equal six is never a true statement for any x. So regardless of what you pick for x here, it's not going to work out because zero times any number, any number being x, it would not be a true statement because we can't multiply by zero. So that means when you uh, when you divide by zero, you're going to get an undefined number. All right. Next part is we're talking about making tables. So it says for each input output rule, fill in table with the outputs that go with any given input. And it says add two more input output pairs to the table, which is what you have at the bottom. And so make sure you can remind yourself what an input and output rule is. When we say an input, we're just talking about an X. And when we have an output, we're talking about a Y. And so when we have a function, when, a, when we have a function, and we'll talk about that here, that here shortly, in the next lesson or so, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be changing our X inside of our function, and then we'll get our output, which is, will be the Y value, and then we'll plot those ordered pairs on the graph. But for right now, we just have to follow the rule that's given. So again, this is going to be the rule right in the center. So for example, it says, okay, when you have three or four, so you take three or four, you add one to it, and then multiply by four. So you'd say, okay, well, if, I, if I wanted to change it to a decimal, again, I have three over four, it's the same thing as 0 0.75. So now if we set it, if we take and add one to it, we'd have 1.75, and we have to multiply it by four. Those two multiplied together would give you seven. So it's taking one step at a time, and so the first step is add one and then multiply by four. So let's do a very similar idea for the next one. It says 2.35. So we're going to say 2.35 plus one is going to be 3.35, and we do times four, and that's going to be 13.4. Again, you can use that calculator for yourself. That way you can multiply those decimals carefully. But then I have to make sure that we're adding one first and then multiplying by four. For the next one, we're going to do 42 as our x value. So again, remember, usually I do uh, x is going to be blue and y is going to be red. But for right now, we'll just kind of remember it as our inputs and outputs. So for 42, we're saying, okay, if we have 42 
plus 1 is going to be 43. And we take 43 times 4, we're going to get 172. So for this one, we're going to say, do an orange now, we'll say 172. All right, so if we wanted a general idea, we could say something like this. Let's do, we do purple this time. So let's say if we had an X value, if we have an X value, we're taking that X value, we're saying, okay, we have X plus one, and then all in parentheses, it's like we have times four. So it's similar to when we were working with that distributed property, we can say whatever X value is, what's our Y gonna be? All right, so if I give you, so now I want you to pause and find what you get when x equals 4. So I want you to pause, pause for your turn. So you're going to add 1 to 4 and then multiply it by 5 to get your value for y. All right, on the next one for number two, it says the rule is going to be name the digit in the tens place. So make sure you're, um, you're careful on your place, uh, place value columns. So you're saying if you have some numbers here, so you want to, uh, let's say it like this. We actually do it sideways so that way it's a little bit easier to remember. All right, so I wrote down, you know, what those place value columns would be. So, for example, if we had, let's say, let's say we had 12.34. So let's say this is your example number. We'd say, okay, well, we have in the tens column, we have a one. In the ones column, we have a two. We have our decimal. We have tenths is going to be three, and the hundredth is going to be four. So make sure you're you know separating those columns out like that. So now we're going to say, all right, well if we have again change that fraction to a decimal, we would say we have zero point seven five. So again, be careful when you're looking at those decimal places, find where you're at, and be able to say what is in the tenths place because that's the one we're looking for. So let me. I circle that or highlight that we're looking for our tenths place. All right. So it's going to be the, the first one to the right of the decimal place. So now the next one, it has 23, or sorry, 2.35. And so our output is going to be the tenths place, which is going to be 3. When we have 42, what's that going to be? Well, if we write down, let's say if we have 42.00, again, make sure you can fill in those decimal places, but we're just going to say this is going to be zero. What about if we get, if I give you 7.31, we're going to say, well, that output is going to be three, since that's where the tenths place is at. And lastly, I want you to find, if I give you 4.95, I want you to pause and give me that tenth place. Make sure to check with me. So let me say, can pause for your turn and check with with me. So give me that y value, what is going to be your tenths place in the, the value uh, 4.95. All right, so for the next one, a lot easier. It's saying to just write seven. So it's almost like it's very similar to the function. So let me say look at the function or the equation or the graph of y equals 7. Let's say function or graph. It's 
very similar to that because it's saying regardless of what your x value is, we're going to write 7. So again, for example, we could say you know, we have, regardless of whatever x value is, we're going to write 7. So regardless of our x, regardless of our x, we're going to write 7. So that one's super simple. Again, that would be a horizontal line. So that's a horizontal line when you look at the graph. All right. And now for the next one, or the last one I should say, it says given your x value, divide one by the input. So for example, it has one, it says x is your input, and it says one over x is going to be your output because it's like we're taking that value divided by the input. And now for the next one, if we were to divide 1 by 3 over 7, it's like we're multiplying by the reciprocal. So it's like we're flipping that fraction, and so we're going to say our output is going to be 7 over 3. For the next one, we're going to say, well, we have... It says to divide 1 by the input. If our input is 1, we're saying, okay, 1 divided by 1 is the same as 1, which is our answer. Then it says for the next one, what happens if we take our x and divide it and divide 1 by it? Well, we know that from the warm-up, we know that's going to be no output or undefined. And for the last one, I'll give you this one. If we say our x is going to be 2. That means when we take and divide 1 by our fraction, we can say that's going to be 0 0.5 or 1 half. So you can say 1 half, which is the same as 0 0.5. So again, make sure you're thinking about when you have a rule, you're talking about changing your input and getting an output. Right, on the back, a little bit more arithmetic or simple math that we're going to be doing. We're going to say, all right, if we have our rule is to divide, so let me make sure we label our parts. We're saying we have our x, we have our y, and that means in the middle, in the middle is going to be the rule. So let me write rule next to that. That's just the operation or steps that we have to do. So if you take and write, so for example, it's saying if you have 4 and you get divide 2 by it, that equals 2, and then you add 1 to it, that will give you your output, which is 3. So let's practice this. It says, all right, so our next one, our input, again, is x, and our output is y. So if our input is 0, we have 0 divided by 2 equals 0, plus 1 equals 1. So our output is going to be 1 when our input is 0. For the next one, well, let's try it out. If we have, if we have our input is 2, we take 2 divided by 2, that's the same as 1. And we have 1 plus 1 is 2. So our output, when our input is 2, our output is going to be also 2. So now for these, I want you to pause again. Pause for your turn. I want to see what you guys can do for these steps. Again, be sure to check with me. Check answers answers with me all right on the next rule I'm trying to fill in this table so our rule is our rule is divide by four and then add two to it so we're going to be taking our x value whatever it is, add 4 
and then get two. Or sorry, then add, sorry, divide by four and then add two. There we go. So our y value is what comes out. So for example, I can say this. Let me, so I do the first couple. I'm going to say if we have zero divided by four, that's going to be zero. And then we add two to it, that's just going to be two. So our output when x equals zero is going to be two. So again, remember, we have our x as our input and y as our output. All right, let's do the same thing. When x equals two, what do we have? So we have two divided by four, which is the same as 0 0.5. And then we add two, uh, two to it to get our output, which is 2.5. So we're going to say our output is going to be 2.5 when our input is 2. So again, make sure you're seeing the difference between those x and y values. You're saying that x is going to be your input and y is going to be your output. Let me do one more and let me see if you guys can see the pattern. So I'm going to say, all right, if, if 4 is our input, so we have 4 divided by 4 is going to be 1. And we have 1 plus 2 is going to be equal to 3. So our output when x equals 4, our output is going to be y, which is 3. It's the same kind of thing. Try to finish these. Pause for your turn. And check with me. All right. And for the last one at the bottom, this one's even easier. It says just write 1 if your input is odd and write 0 if your input is even. So look, we're saying like this. We're going to say, all right, so negative 3 is an odd number, so it gets 1. However, negative 2 is an even number, so it's going to be 0. And kind of notice the pattern that's going to be. It's going to be 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. That's because we're saying, you know, this is going to be odd, even, odd, even. And notice how it has that, pa uh, that pattern for these values. So you're always looking for you know, what is the pattern? So you're always looking for, always look for the pattern. Because that way it's a lot easier to be able to figure out. So again, make sure you're going back, finishing those, uh, your turns. Be sure to check with me. And as always, super slam that subscribe button.